All right, guys, it's Jernigan here. I was trying to film this thing about the deaths in the UK with Matt Hancock's speech, but the phone decided to crash on me. So I'm going to have to do the whole thing again now. It's just kind of annoying. Uh, there we go. That's Matt H Hancock's is speaking. I don't know the death numbers now. I was speaking about it. But now I've sorted the phone. Decided to freeze on me. He was speaking about interesting things a minute ago. And of course, if you have symptoms, please self-isolate immediately and get tested to protect your friends and family. So let's keep going and we'll get through this. We'll now turn to questions. The first questions are from members of the public. And the first one is from Danny from Huddersfield. Danny. Over the last week, a number of measures have been relaxed. If the hour rate now begins to increase because of this... There you go, 324 COVID-19 deaths, 39,369. Really uh, they're saying it may go up to 50,000 or 40. Um, the package of measures that we've taken, we judge to be safe. But of course, it depends on how people behave. And so it's important that people... Uh, so Matt Hancock is speaking now. I would have had a longer video, but it crashed. Um, do we'll apologise. Keep it under review. We then, if we need to make changes, we can either make them at a national level or a local level, and that will be determined by where we see any uh, outbreaks if we see them. Uh, and then, at a national level, we can look. We can look right across the board. Um, but our and of course, mm, we've been crashing. clear from the start that if we need to, we will bring in further measures. But we have chosen these measures in order to be able to relax some of the most stringent parts of the lockdown whilst also keeping people safe. John. Yes, thank you, Secretary of State. Um, I think the answer, Danny, is that it would depend on how the uh, virus was coming back. Um, key to any public health control, and particularly for this virus, is the surveillance uh, information. Dr. Pepper, that, uh, anything could happen. Surveys, but also routine surveillance, for example, from general practice. Um, so if it was, uh, if the virus came back in a particular setting, whether it were a healthcare setting or, or perhaps in, um, in... Deaths in hospitals, 26,865. In U.S. Democrats, presidential candidates, jobs, Biden said will need to take a hard look at Call true uh, that allows senseless target uh, target get, dies uh, to happen. Which is a general mm. term of the virus, uh, it would be patchy. It would be in it would be in localized areas, and that's why we are keeping that. Um, Security passing the law in China and Hong Kong. Thanks very much, Danny. The next question on mining question the one Barbara country's policy. And Barbara asks, when will those members of the general public who suspect that they may have had COVID-19? be able to have an antibody test and how will this be rolled out? Um, well, this is another great question, Barbara. In Wales, people the who have been shielding instance, can enjoy unlimited exercise and meeting people for the first time. No change has been made we yet guidance for people who are shielding in Scotland and Northern Ireland. And social care, at just over 40,000 a day on the latest uh, figures. Um, and then we'll roll them out uh, across the country. Lockdown measures the, in England is we currently yet been able stay to alert. Pin down the science of whether having antibody means that you are uh, at lower risk of getting the infection again, and critically, uh, lockdown measures people in England are transmitting the virus. encouraged to You've return home. To working can't work so from we home. We'll be rolling out uh, antibody tests more broadly. And we've bought a, a huge number of them to be able to do that. Um, they, they Returning plus three plus so years one six primary um, school, the first that. return to school in England. We're trying to expand the rate at which we've rolled that because I, I entirely understand your yearning to know. Thanks very much. Uh, questions from the media. If we go to Rihanna Croxford from the BBC, Rihanna. Thank you, Secretary of State. Many people from black and minority ethnic backgrounds will be confused why it's taken six weeks for the government to simply confirm what studies have already shown, that they're dying with COVID-19 at significantly higher rates. 
deaths from all causes in this period yeah, yeah, have been up to four times higher on average for people from these backgrounds, and this hasn't been fully explained by today's review. Firstly, how can you explain this disparity, which hasn't just been caused by the virus, and why haven't you done more to protect and support these communities? And if I could also please have a response from Professor Newton. And secondly, on behalf of a colleague, you've been criticised mm. by the staff and yeah. watchdog for the presentation of the virus testing figures. Is that embarrassing over such an important policy area? Thanks very much. Um, I will, if I just address the second question first, uh, and then I will, both John and I, I'm sure, will uh, answer on the first, which is so important. On the, uh, on the second question, um, the, the, uh, the way that we present the stats is the best that we can in the, uh, Bangladesh. the testing program. So you can see so that risk of something to death. Short period of time. Uh, we are working with the stats authorities to be able to, to present these statistics in a way that they're happy with uh, and to make sure that we're as transparent as possible. Uh, I spoke to Sir David Norgrove today, who, uh, who is the, the head of UK Statistics Authority, uh, and we'll be working with them to make sure that these statistics are uh, a constant... Keep burping because of these uh, but, uh, the way that we present them is the fumes and the um, Dr. Pepper, you know, which makes you make burps. A picture of the overall five okay. different pillars uh, of testing, and that's the approach that we've taken. Uh, on the first part of your question, about the report from Public Health England. You know, I, I, I think this is an incredibly important area. I've been really struck by the, 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 the clear yeah. difference in the proportion of people who are dying with COVID-19 uh, from ethnic minority backgrounds, and I wanted to get to the bottom of it. So I asked Public Health England to do this work, and by the end of May, they've done that. But you're absolutely right that there's much more work that needs to be done and this report shows that. So we're asking, I've asked the Equalities Minister, uh, Kemi Badnock, to take this forward and to look into the, the causes and what further can be done. And, uh, and Professor Newton's been involved in this work from the start. Yeah, so thank you. I mean, I mean just on the reporting of the statistics, um, it's worth bearing in mind the objective of the testing program was to build a capacity of test, of test to respond to the pandemic. Um, and it's really what we do with the tests rather than the numbers which are which matter. So at the moment we have a, a falling number of infections, um, and what we're really keen to do is to have really high quality testing that's delivered quickly and and uh, very available. So um, the, the actually just the numbers of tests isn't a measure of how effective the program is. It's the, whether we're testing the right people, testing them quickly, and getting the results back. So uh, we're happy to report the numbers in any way. Uh, in any way that, uh, that, we're, that we're asked to. House Secretary um, Matt Hancock um, says we have a, any symptoms of COVID-19, um, we must be tested, added three more than enough testing six months. So capacity. We've actually produced uh, the sort of analysis that, that in, in a relatively short time. Um, as you say, some of these data were already available, so the uh, Office of National Statistics and Locked other research measures have already published. So in England, that, currently stay alert. Boris Johnson speaks. Um, as you say, uh, we weren't able to look at all the potential uh, explanations, but in particular, you mentioned the uh, all cause mortality being four times uh, higher. Pardon me. Nine times higher I don't know what it is today. Than, for example, than, uh, uh, than in normal times. Uh, Under government plans, in, in men, international arrivals must self-isolate for 14 days on Monday. So there are a number of statistics in there. Uh, it's quite a long report, and there's a great deal of, of background information and detailed information. That the people that are coming into the country have to self-isolate for like 14 days. COVID-19 as well. But the way it is. So we think the report will be helpful. Um, some of it was available before, but there's quite a lot of new information there. Uh, really and it's not, it's not uh, easy to uh, to go directly from the analysis to uh, making recommendations, and we need to uh, get the report widely disseminated and widely discussed before, I think, deciding uh, exactly what needs to be done. But clearly there are some fairly obvious conclusions that can be drawn even from the data that we have. Can I please blow up on that? Yes, of course, yeah. Mm. So, you know, firstly, thank you for acknowledging that Black Lives Matter in your opening speech, but a lot of people are already going back to work, scared that they're not being protected, and there'll be no measures announced today, as we had expected, 
perhaps be put in place to protect them. Can you say anything to these communities? And if not, can you give us a time frame or a deadline when they will get recommendations about how they can protect themselves going forward, considering that this risk won't be going away? Yes, absolutely. The number one thing I'd say is that for anybody in a higher risk group, the most important thing to do is stringently to follow the social distancing guide, including the work on social distancing at work that's been published. So there's specific guidance for social distancing in the workplace. So for all of the different high risk categories that the data demonstrate, it's really important that people uh, follow those social distancing guidelines uh, very stringently. You know, we've been very clear about this from the start about uh, those who either have a medical condition and as the PHG report says, age is the number one risk factor uh, because um, uh, around 90% of deaths are amongst the over 65. Um, so uh, the, 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 uh, the answer, the direct answer to the question is, this, is the same as to everybody but with more emphasis, which is that the social distancing is the best way to keep yourself safe and keep others safe alongside the hygiene and washing your hands and making sure that if you have symptoms, get a test. And I totally understand the concerns that people have uh, and I understand the, um, uh, the anger that's, that people feel the more about racial injustice more broadly and I share it and we want to tackle it. We, I fully acknowledge that and it is very, very important that we address that it, uh, as I'm trying to do within the NHS and social care that I'm responsible for, uh, we need to do across society as a whole. Thanks very much, Rhiannon. Is that okay? Yeah. Emily Morgan from ITV. Hi, um, if I can pick up on something that Rihanna said, you launched this review, Secretary of State, this review published today with a huge fanfare to look at how COVID-19 is affecting ethnic minorities. One of the objectives to the review was to make recommendations. Where are those recommendations and will you be publishing any anytime soon? Well, yeah, absolutely. We need to take, go through the next stage of work um, to make sure that we take into account all of the different considerations. For instance, the PHG report sets out... I'm going to do another video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed this one because of the phone memory. I'm going to have to do another one. Don't worry. Peace. Thank you, John. Peace. Um,